FYI, he missed the last RTC meeting, so I hope he's around. Not good. I don't know what that's like. I remind you every year. I think it's six o'clock, seven o'clock thing. I know sometimes that trips trips some people up. I know I've done it before. Joining now. Yay. Well, we're waiting. You can let everyone know this is the most non-black I think I've ever worn in my entire life. I feel very visible and bright. It's kind of awkward. Well, for what it worth, it's worth. It looks great. Great thing. All right, looks like we have council member Bertrand joining us. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Larry to let us know uh, when we've, we've gone live and I'll get us started. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. I will be starting, I'm starting it right now. You're live. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, this evening's Capitola City Council meeting. I'm going to turn it over to our city clerk to read some information about uh, remote access for tonight's meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Hello and welcome to the Capitola City Council meeting. In accordance with the current Santa Cruz County Health Order and the Governor's Executive Order N-2920, this meeting is not physically open to the public. Council and staff are meeting via Zoom and there are several ways for the public to watch and participate. Information on how to join the meeting over Zoom or with your phone is available on our website, cityofcapitola.org, on the slides now shown, and on the published meeting agenda. 
Thank you for attending the meeting. Mayor Peterson, I'll turn back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Council Member Bertrand. Here. Council Member Bator. Here. Council Member Story. Here. Vice Mayor Brooks. Here. And Mayor Peterson. Here. Thank you. We're going to move now to the Pledge of Allegiance. And if you wouldn't mind, I will ask for Council Member Bator to lead us uh, in tonight's pledge. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Council Member Bothworth. We're going to move on now to item two, presentation. And we're going to be uh, providing a retirement proclamation for senior mechanic Tim, excuse me, Jim Turcott. Do we have Jim on camera? Yeah, if you could wave, Jim. Yeah, perfect. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read the proclamation. We are honoring senior mechanic James Turcott upon his retirement for 40 years of, city, of service to the city. Whereas on June 9, 1980, as a 19-year-old, James Turcott was hired as part of a summer youth employment program where Jim exhibited excellent work habits. And whereas upon his graduation from high school, Jim accepted a full-time position in the public works department as a maintenance worker on November 17, 1980. And whereas Jim worked as a maintenance worker one and two for five years, and on July 1st, 1985, was promoted to the position of maintenance supervisor. Jim typically went above and beyond to take care of all of the demands, last minute requests, and emergencies that came along. Jim held this position for 10 years before moving to the position of mechanic in October of 1995, and finally senior mechanic in March of 2015. And whereas, Jim was named the Maintenance Division Employee of the Year in 1989 and again in 1995 for mastering everything there is to master in the Public Works Department. And whereas Jim is an excellent athlete who excelled in golf and basketball and helped a Public Works team win many games against all comers, and whereas Jim has kept his sense of humor through his many years Ensuring that work with a, ensuring work with a smile, even while comprehending the underbelly of the city street sweeper, leads to longevity. And whereas during his many years of service, Jim has represented the city of Capitola with the highest degree of professionalism, always keeping the city's best interests in mind. He has maintained exemplary high work standards learning, leading, and teaching others the importance of a completed job well done, finishing work within budget and cleaning up in preparation for the next task. And whereas Jim leaves the city as the longest tenured full-time employee to date, his 40 plus years of service will likely not be equaled or broken. And whereas Jim Turcott has decided to move on to the next phase of his life take off the wristwatch to forget the exact time except the tea time. And whereas his coworkers in the Department of Public Works wish Jim and his family nothing but the best in retirement life. Now, therefore, I, Kristen Peterson, Mayor of the City of Capitola, on behalf of the entire City Council, do recognize and commend Jim Turcott for his 40 years of excellent and dedicated service to the people of Capitola and wish him well in his retirement. Jim, congratulations. You have given more to this, more years of service to the city than I have been alive on this earth. You are absolutely an incredible example of exemplary public and community service. We definitely want to hear from you, but before I turn the floor over to you for a couple words, I would like to uh, turn it over to Steve Jesford, who I believe has some comments as well. Thank you, Mayor Peterson, city council members. Tim, I'm sorry, can't be with you today. <laughs> Excuse me. It took a pandemic to keep me away. I want to thank you for your years of service. Managed to work with you for almost half your career. You've been an exemplary employee. I just want to wish you 
and show a happiness and health uh, in retirement. So now I'd like to turn it over to my uh, cohort and former public works director or former assistant public works director, Ed Morrison. Ed? Good evening. Um, this is a, a proclamation um, the mayor just read out uh, for you, Jim. Um, good evening. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. Um, great job on the proclamation. But one thing you left out of this proclamation, one of his personal abilities that I'm most jealous of is this guy can dance. <laughs> I mean, I'm Michael Jackson has gotten nothing on him. Um, seriously, though, in baseball terms, the city hit a grand slam, a walk-off grand slam when they hired Jim. As stated in the proclamation, Jim is well-liked and respected by all his co-workers, present and retired. Me, I love the guy. He is humble as the day is long and has always been soft-spoken. He preferred to let his work speak for him, and it is always spoken volumes. Um, Public Works uh, wanted to present him something with it, and uh, they talked about it a little bit. He talked about it a little bit, and we thought we'd get him a key. Uh, we tried to get Jamie's key to the bank, and we couldn't pry it out of his hand. So in lieu of that, um, they're from Public Works. They're presenting him with this gold key. Um, more often than not, it's a gold key to the city, but in Jim's case, this is a gold key to the thing that he's probably most intimate here, the underbelly of the street sweeper. So this is a key to the street sweeper from all public works. <laughs> it's my honor to congratulate you on your retirement. I'd like to wish you good luck. Good luck to you and your family, and keep it on the fairway. There you go, bud. Congratulations. I personally would like to thank City of Jeff Cole for giving me this opportunity to be an employee. Didn't know what I was going to do right out of high school. Didn't have any clue, but thanks for Ed and a couple other people that prior um, gave me the opportunity to work here, and all I could do was to try to exceed as much as I could, and the people really helped me out here, and I appreciate everybody I've met over the years and worked with, and they're all great people, and I just hope that you all just do well off after all this pandemic stuff is done and get things back to normal. Thank you so much. And Jim, again, congratulations and thank you for all of your service. If we could all either uh, virtually or through your reactions, hand a round of applause. Thank you again. Thank you. Well done, Jim. Thank you. All right. We are going to move on to item three, uh, election business. And we will begin. Uh, with a quick recognition, I could turn it. Let's see. Can I turn over to our moderator and see if we're ready to? Yes. Okay. We're going to. Okay. We're going to begin uh, with election business with a recognition of outgoing council member Botorf. Uh I will begin uh, by saying, Ed, I, I believe that there was. Um, a, a gift presented to you in these virtual times. I, I think it was handed off to you um, with six feet, feet apart from you and whoever handed it off to you. A little bit different than if we were in person, but if you want to hold that up, wonderful. And that is a photo by Brian Garrison of Wet Feet Photography. He had the winning submission in a city photo contest. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to turn it over to, to the council for some comments in a minute here, but, but I, I'm going to um, take the liberty to start. 
Ed, when I first ran for council in 2016, I came to um, nearly every council meeting that year to prepare for what it would mean to be on council, and you were the mayor at the time. And I learned so much just from watching you run a meeting um, and the way that you were congenial and kind to all people, even when there were disagreements over policy or practice, and uh, I, I learned so much from that. When I was first elected, uh, you and I uh, went to lunch at Zelda so you could talk to me about the seat I was about to take at AMBAG. Um, and during that conversation, I remember that you spoke, um, you spoke truth to me and you spoke very freely and I sat there like a deer in the headlights and I didn't know what to say uh, because I was a brand new council member. Um, but I will always cherish that from the very beginning that you were uh, thoughtful and kind and honest and that throughout these last four years on council with you, you have continued to be thoughtful and kind and honest. Um, and that though we have, have had policy disagreements at times, uh, I never was concerned that we would uh, essentially no longer be able to discuss other policy issues or that we weren't going to be able to come together uh, on other important matters. Um, I, I, I feel very honored to have, to have had four years on council with you. You will be very missed. And I hope you know that I will be knocking on your door in two years uh, to make sure that you're you're considering running again, if not then, then in the future. Um, and that will be that will be my rallying cry for you uh, from here on until until eternity. So I, I just want to personally thank you, Ed, uh, from the bottom of my heart. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you. You have, you have been a wonderful a wonderful role model um, for for what it means to be a council member uh, in good times and in bad. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to other council members uh, to see if there's other members of the council that would like to uh, to comment. Uh, and let's turn to council member story. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. Uh, yes, I wouldn't want to miss this opportunity. Um, Ed, it's just unfortunate that we can't all be in chambers there with you uh, to watch and, and to speak to you personally uh, about our experiences with you. Um, I know you and I, ever since you were first elected in 2012, um, you and I have had a, a very interesting political history uh, in this community. Um, and through it all, though, I've always uh, admired and respect how hard and how diligently you work for the city of Capitola. Not only being on the council, um, but you have represented Capitola on all the local commissions and committees. Uh, Kristen mentioned uh, ANBAD, uh, you were on LAFCO, you were on Metro, you were on the uh, Regional Transportation Commission, um, um, the Chamber of Commerce before that, and the, and the, and the uh, Public Safety Foundation. Um, you have and are an integral uh, part of this community. And I would have to say that the one that I, I was probably most impressed by um, was when you committed yourself to the uh, uh, select committee for South Bay arrivals um, at the appointment of Sam Farr, and you traveled over the hill uh, to represent our community uh, on uh, the issue of the overflux. Um, I thought that demonstrated some um, uh, real commitment. Um, and, um, you know, I would have to say that um, uh, you and I probably didn't agree on everything, um, but I always appreciated and respected your point of view um, and the issues that you presented. You were always thoughtful. You were always civil. Um, and you were always, uh, you know, profound. Um, and if I didn't necessarily agree, I always saw one thing that came from you in that you, you were committed and that you loved this community and that you, know, you love the uh, city of Capitola. Um, and, you know, when it comes down to it, that's what really matters. 
so um, so I want to thank at both as a council member and as a resident of the city of Capitola, I want to thank you for all your years of service um, and your diligent efforts on behalf of the city of Capitola. I won't say goodbye because I know you're going to be in the community and you're going to be back. So I'll just close and say, see you around, Ed. Um, enjoy your time off or for now. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I see Vice Mayor Brooks has a comment as well. Council Member Bator, um, I, I know you have some words to share as well, so I won't take up too much of your time. Um, I have truly, truly, have, gosh, I feel like I'm going to get choked up here. I just think back to our time at Mr. Tooth when you sat down with me, and all you've ever done since the moment we've met is support me and believe in me. And that is just a true representation of who you are um, in believing in, in Capitola and those who represent it. So, Ed, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all that you've done for, for our city, for me, and as Sam's story just said, I'll see you very soon. Thank you, Yvette. All right, I'm just going to check to see. Oh, Council Member Bertrand, do you have a comment as well? You're still on mute, Council Member Bertrand. So I appreciate it uh, the last time Ed spoke and he talked about his history behind why he um, supported some of the uh, city projects downtown. And so my comment basically is more so than any other city council person that I've known and I've sat in many meetings. Uh, you really worked on projects that help downtown, um, you know, drainage, uh, the new one that's coming up, uh, helping to uh, share costs on new sidewalks, I mean, et cetera, et cetera. You've had a focus on downtown, I think, that's exemplary. And you also had a good sense of the business issues. You're someone also that walked around downtown and you knew those things intimately. So I think that's great. I, I totally agree with that. Um, I've always agreed with you, actually. And the main reason why I've always agreed with you is because you sat and analyzed problems and you had your own bent on what the answer should be and what the policy should be. So whether it came to what I wanted, it didn't matter. What I agreed with you on is your effort to come to a solution that was the best for Capitola. So I salute you for that. And hey, I'll see you on the streets. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you, Councilmember Bertrand. Um, don't, we're going to come to you, uh, Councilmember Bosworth, I promise. Before we do that, I would like to open it to uh, public comment for any members of the public that would like to recognize Councilmember Bosworth. And I will turn it over to our moderator uh, to let us know if there's any members of the public that have comments. Yes, I believe the, the first comment, I believe, is uh, one of the panelists. Uh, the, the Capitola POA, I believe, is ready to go. Good evening, uh, Council staff. Uh, today, uh, we didn't have a change. Um, Ed, um, I mean, everyone has talked about your love for the city, uh, but also I think one of the biggest things was your love and appreciation for all the employees here. Um, which was very well felt by not just everyone at the police department, but uh, everyone in the city. Uh, when we heard about this, uh, you know, we tried to figure out how we could thank you uh, during this pandemic. Uh, it was a little hard, uh, but we came up with a small little gesture uh, to show our appreciation. Um, I'll send over to Scott. And. Uh, President Pedro and myself, we um, went to our POA body. We uh, wanted to recognize your eight years, your dedication to the community, and the dedication to the men and women for the Three Fossils Association and our record division. It didn't go unnoticed, so I appreciate it. We uh, want to present you, uh, to go closer, we want to present you with a plaque. Uh, 
commemorating your tireless effort with us. Hopefully we can walk this over tonight, the PLA badge and your service of commitment. So we wanted to make sure that was uh, acknowledged from our vow. Thank you. Scott and Pedro, I have some words for you guys later, but for right now, thank you very much. You, I think you really know how much that means to me. Thank you. Thank you. We have, we have a couple more public comments, um, Mayor Peterson. Um, first up is Supervisor Friend. Thank you, Mayor Peterson and uh, Councilmember Bator, for as everybody in the community calls you, Councilmember Botteroff. I just wanted to make sure that we, uh, you didn't get away without some acknowledgement from uh, your friend and also County Supervisor. You know, Ed constantly would say that he isn't a politician, uh, that he doesn't want to be an out front guy, but in many respects, I feel like this is what makes you uh, one of the best that we have in our county because. Uh, you ask for nothing. You do everything. You work harder than most people that I know. Uh, you're committed to always what's right. Uh, you, you speak softly and, and not often, but when you do, people listen. Uh, you're always there for advice to bounce ideas off of, and you never come with an agenda. I mean, just think about if we could model that at a state and national level. Ed, I, I've really, I've really, uh, we basically came in at the same time. And, in fact, at Gales, and you'll remember that conversation we had when I was first running, and, and you said you were considering doing the same, and, and uh, we said, let's go for it. And here we are eight, eight years later, and I think you have, you have quite a track record and, and quite a lot to be proud of. Uh, I really, it's been an honor serving with you. Uh, thank you for your commitment. It, it says a lot that, that uh, I mean, it doesn't surprise me to hear the POA say what they say about your care of the employees because you really are in it for the right reasons. I mean, you, some people get into these jet seat gigs because they have their own ideas of grandeur, and you just simply wanted to make the community you live better, uh, and you did. So, Ed, uh, you'll be missed. I'm with Kristen. I'm all for you doing it again in two years. I know you're not, but uh, we can all wish for the best. Uh, thanks for your eight years of service, and thanks for your eight years of, of continued friendship. Thank you, Zach. Now we have uh, T.J. Welch. Well, I can't really add much more than what uh, we've heard from some of the folks tonight already. I, I wanted to thank Ed for, one, his appointment to uh, the Planning Commission for me. And, um, uh, you know, Ed never um, tried to push me one way or the other. In fact, I was happy, I'm happy to say that he actually uh, let me say on the planning commission, even though he may not have agreed with what I have had to say. So, uh, Ed, thank you for uh, the eight years of being the planning commissioner. That was uh, something I enjoyed doing. But uh, I also want to say, as a resident uh, and a friend, that uh, Ed, and, I, and I, we've heard it from others tonight, both the colleagues or other fellow uh, council members, uh, from the employees, and, and now from even from uh, one of the supervisors that Ed has done a lot for the community. One, he's a huge supporter of, of the employees, and um, and that can be difficult, but we just saw recently in one of the last uh, city council meetings where he pushed one of the norms for the city to uh, do away with free parking because it just didn't make sense to give away free parking when we uh, gave the, the city uh, employees had to take a cut. So that speaks volumes about Ed and where he stands. Uh, when he uh, originally got on, I know his, one of his big commitments was uh, financial responsibility, which uh, watching over these eight years, I've, I've watched him uh, keep that as, a, as something that's in the forefront of what he's done his decision. So I think that's great as well. And um, I'm glad to call you my friend. I think you've done a great job as a city. Uh, I, I hope that some of our other council members will keep some of those same missions in front and having that uh, moral compass and that fiscal responsibility compass in front of them. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm really impressed that you actually got the POA to give you the award. I think that speaks volumes of value. And uh, when you have differing members on the uh, city council uh, respect you, I think that says a lot because I think you've done that one thing that I've heard from other council members tonight is you've shown respect for others, even when Maybe we're, you were on opposite sides of the uh, 
it's a decision making process. So, hey, congratulations on your retirement from the, now the new city council, and uh, we'll see you around town. Thank you, TJ. Now we'll ask our moderator if you have any additional public comment. Uh, Mayor Peterson, I do not see any other public comment on this item. All right. Well, with that, I will turn it over to you, Council Member Bator, if you have any comments that you would like to make this evening. Well, uh, Mayor Peterson, you you know me well enough to know I have some comments, uh, but I, I, you know, it, it I, I'm. I was all prepared to give my, my speech, and the, the, the kind words that people say kind of put you in a place where you have to stop and reflect a little bit. So I'm, I'm caught in a little reflection right now, but I'm going to try to get through this. I, I really appreciate the kind words from everybody that spoke, and uh, I'm going to try to get through this letter because you all have business to do tonight. I would first like to thank the city manager and the city clerk for allowing me to participate in the last city council meeting from the Capitola City Council Chambers. Although we have adapted to COVID-19 and its restrictions, there is nothing that can replace holding a meeting in a public building with the public present and the interaction and dynamics that takes place during that forum. I promised the city manager that although I have never been short on words or opinions and that traditionally city council members are not on a clock, I would limit my farewell thoughts to one minute for every year of service. So with eight years of service here at Capitola, please bear with me for the next eight minutes. But before you start the clock, I have one disclaimer statement to read. It must be clearly stated that although one may come up with a plethora of ideas while serving in this role, none of them ever come to fruition unless you are successful at convincing at least two other members of the City Council that your idea has merit. So I take credit for some accomplishments because it was only, be only because two other individuals felt the same way that I did. Conversely, when I get to my failures or shortcomings that may have occurred for two reasons, one, because I was totally off base and wrong, or two, even worse, I didn't work hard enough to convince at least two other people that another direction may have been delivered a better outcome. So with those disclaimers, you can start the clock. So many things have gone through my head over the last few months, and the ability to recap everything in my tenure would be impossible and, quite frankly, boring. I have chosen to narrow it down to four main topics, accomplishments, failures, the future, and gratitude. I've been fortunate to work with a variety of council members. At my very first meeting, the agenda packet was 850 pages long. I thought it was a joke. I read it all. We were voting on whether to charge 10 cents or 25 cents for a paper bag in an attempt to persuade people to start using reusable bags. Bottorf, Harlan, and Norton voted yes, and it prevailed. My final decision was made when I asked my mom if she forgot a reusable bag in the car, would she walk back to the car to save a dime? She said no, but she would walk back to save a quarter. Sales tax measures. I campaigned heavily for Measure O, that only passed by 67 votes. That generates a million dollars a year for perpetuity for the city of Capitola. Same with Measure F, which generates a million dollars a year for 10 years to help rebuild our wharf, flume, and jetty. The jetty which, as we sit here right now, is being rebuilt. TOT tax. After two tries, and I won't recap the first because it was ugly, I built an alliance with the local business community that resulted in Capitola raising its TOT tax by 2%. That tax supports local business, children, and generates at least $150,000 every year. With guidance and assistance from Steve Jesberg, and starting with a small project in front of Beach House Rentals, we developed a shared business city sidewalk funding program that allowed us to widen or replace hundreds of feet of sidewalk in the village from Margaritaville to Zelda's, along Stockton Avenue, and down Capitola Avenue to the trestle. I've called the next section shortcomings because I really don't believe during my eight years that on the city council we did anything that negatively affected the forward path of the city. There were some items that I didn't agree with, sometimes vehemently, but I am choosing to take the high road tonight and not bring those up. Sometimes, however, I was never able to accomplish 
mainly because they never made their way to the city council. Number one on my list is the Village Hotel. When I campaigned for this position eight years ago, I firmly stood on a position that the Village Hotel would not only replace the historic landmark and provide a, the city with a solid stream of revenue, but that it would be a shot in the arm the village needed to revitalize shops, restaurants, and other lodging facilities. I still feel the same way. Narrow-minded thinking by a small group of people for many years has prevented any builder from even presenting a plan to the council. If as a community all we do is try to stop policies and developments that represent some kind of change, we can guarantee that we will be successful in doing nothing. While it may be, seem romantic that we keep everything the way it is, it is unrealistic to believe that we will be able to meet the future needs of our community by doing so. Now more than ever, with the long-lasting effects of the pandemic, the village needs something to draw the overnight visitor who will sleep, shop, and dine here. Beach visitors in Surfers Park, although mostly in our neighborhoods, leave their trash and drive home without even buying a t-shirt or a cheeseburger. Hopefully someday the hotel will be built to restore the grandeur this charming coastal village town deserves. Number two, I have joined yet another group of unsuccessful council members who have tried desperately to open the Rispin Park to the public. I know I have voted on numerous occasions to provide additional funds for that project, but it is still closed and for that, I am sad. The future. Obviously, the first and foremost task of the new city council will be to deal with the adverse effects of the pandemic. Hopefully for all of us, the vaccine will lead us in a positive direction. I have been fortunate to serve on the RTC and the Metro Board of Directors for six years. It seems that the larger the commission and the more the public comment, the less time there is for commissioners to actually have debates on the topic. After listening to all the public comment, discussing all the options, and evaluating all the studies, I believe running a train, whether it be freight or commuter from Watsonville to Santa Cruz, is a boondoggle, period. A world-class trail is what should be constructed on that property. I believe the mall is the greatest and maybe the last opportunity to provide long-term stability, both financially and structurally, for this city. It will provide necessary housing in the right direction, in the right location. With careful guidance from the City Council, this project could benefit all of 41st Avenue, enhance the village, and add desirable features for all the residents of Capitola. I am thankful for my time on the City Council. The citizens of this town allowed me to make decisions for eight years. My goal was always to do what was best for the, all 10,000 residents. I will walk away from this job and rely on the current elected officials to make decisions moving forward. I do not believe my role or that of other elected officials is to continually be active involving the path of the city. Change is good, it is necessary, and without it, we will not be able to thrive. Finally, gratitude to my colleagues, Jacques, you and I. Councilmember Botorf, you've been, uh, has been muted. Can we unmute Councilmember Botorf? Oh. Did you tap? That was me, I did it on my own, sorry. Gratitude, we don't want to forget gratitude. Uh, Jock, you and I, we've had, a, we've had a tenuous relationship over the years, and I'm glad for all the times whenever we thought we were going in bad directions, we would stop, go to Mr. Toots, meet, and try to work things out. Jock, you have the kindest heart of anybody I've ever worked with on the council, and you always brought that to the meeting and you voted from your heart, and I appreciated that. Sam, you were here when I started, and you are here when I left. I remember when I first started, they were accusing you of backroom deals uh, for, for rent control, and you've always been a solid pillar of wisdom, and I leave this council knowing that you will carry this council with that wisdom forward. Yvette, you're a hard charger. Uh, you know, I, when, you, when you and Kristen got on the council, I called you guys the bookends. Jamie said I couldn't say that, but I said the two of them are going to keep us in check. They're going to make sure that the, the, the three of us work in the right direction. And, and now with me leaving, I think it's going to be changed to the Three Musketeers, and I have confidence that you, along with Kristen and, and uh, Margo, will do a great job. But for you, I love your energy. You commented on that, and I'm, and I'm proud of what's going to happen to you in about the next hour, so thank you. And Kristen, you hit the nail on the head. You know, we started, uh, I, you know, you and I actually first met when we were making phone calls on the library. And uh, I remember you, you were hardworking, and, and 
I'm so proud of the work you did as a mayor. Uh, you set a good example of what a compassionate mayor should be like and how to run a meeting, and, and I thank you for everything you did. Uh, to all the city employees, thank you for being so warm and welcoming. From my first day in the council, I always felt like I belonged. I have a special appreciation for all of Public Works employees who work all hours of the day and night keeping our streets open, our drains open, and making every effort to keep the water in the ocean. They pick up the trash and still find time to hang Christmas lights. If you've ever seen something broken and then miraculously, miraculously it's repaired, chances are Public Works has something to do with it. I cannot say enough about our police department. We are living in a difficult time of real appreciation and need to remember to acknowledge the people who put their lives at risk every day. We were all once kids, we all played together, we all grew up, and we all chose careers. We are the same people. Police officers are just the ones stuck with the responsibility of enforcing the laws that we may or not agree with. For that I am sorry, and I will pray for unity for all of us. I have been fortunate to work with four city clerks, three finance directors, three community development directors, three police chiefs, two legal firms, but only one public work director and one city manager. All of you have brought great skills and talents to the city and improved on the work of the person before you. Steve and Jamie, I have no one to compare you to. I do know, Steve, that you've always been here, and as crazy as my ideas have been, you always found time to listen to me, advise me, and in some cases actually find a way to do what I ask. And for that, I am extremely grateful. It's no secret that I believe our city manager is a great asset to the city of Capitola. I have challenged him for eight years and sometimes put him in a situation no city manager would ever want to be in. He always maintained an even keel and led the city through many difficult times, including rent control, the broken pipe and flood, and now the pandemic. He always found a way to stay the course. Several people have been personal supporters of mine, well, at least most of the time. And even though I can't mention them all, I can't leave without acknowledging a few. Glenn and Karen Hanna, thank you for your friendship, support, and the best campaign sign ever on your roof. Ted Burke, we have fought like cats and dogs, but in the end, the city, local business, and the kids all won. T.J. Welch and his wife Connie, the man who brought me to this town, he was the best planning commissioner a resident in this city could ever have. I am happy and fortunate to have them as my best friends. And to my girlfriend of 10 years, Jennifer Cosgrove, I met her at Paradise Beach Grill, and with the help of a chicken quesadilla, the rest is history. We've shared a glorious time in this beachside town. She has stood by me through thick and thin. She endured meeting after meeting, public comment, letters to the editor, and the newspaper. Tonight, it all comes to an end. We can go back to sunsets, walks on the beach, and a glass of wine on Thursday nights. Cheers, Capitola, and thank you, Mayor Peterson, for allowing me to share these final thoughts. Thank you, Councilmember Bob, for a round of applause. You've truly been an asset to our city, and, and as others have said, this is this is not goodbye. This is see you around, uh, hopefully, uh, quite often. Fantastic. All right. Well, um, Councilmember Bothorf, you're you're going to be a part of this um, this next item. Uh, and that is consider a resolution confirming and approving the canvas of returns and results of the general municipal election. Well, for the last time, I would like to approve staff recommendation. A second. We have a motion and a second. If I could turn to staff briefly just for clarification, do I need to go to public comment for these items before we get to general government or no? You can see if there's any public comment on this prior to the vote. Okay. I'll turn it over to the moderator then. Mayor Peterson, I do not see anyone asking to comment on this item. Great, thank you. All right, uh, is there any additional council comments before we uh, move on with the vote? All right, with that, we have a motion and a second. Can we have a roll call vote, please? 
Yes, Council Member Bertrand. I approve. Council Member Bautorp. Aye. Thank you. Council Member Story. Aye. Vice Mayor Brooks. Aye. And Mayor Peterson. Aye. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. And with that, I will turn it to our clerk uh, as we have, um, as, excuse me, as we have, um, oh, excuse me. My apologies. There will be a brief pause right now uh, after our vote uh, for staff to reorganize. And the city clerk is going to let us know when we're ready to resume uh, with item 3C. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Have a wonderful evening. You too, boy. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I hope to see you around. You will. Thanks for your patience, everyone. We're just taking a moment for uh, staff to reorganize some things within the council chamber. Uh, and as soon as the city clerk lets us know, we'll be right back in just, just a moment. Thank you for your patience. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, excuse me, I was just moving some things around. <laughs> We are ready to continue. Um, the next item is 3C. Go, go ahead, please. Thank you. All right. Yes, we are on to item uh, 3C, oath of office ceremony for newly elected and re-elected council members. And I'm going to turn it over to the city clerk, who will be administering the oath of office uh, for, in the order I see on the agenda, it will be myself, uh, followed by our new council member, Margo Kaiser. Yes, thank you. Uh, our current mayor and soon to be new council member, Kristen Peterson, we're doing this in order of votes received. So we will go with you first. Um, if you wanna raise your right hand and repeat after me, I'll read the oath slowly and then you can repeat as we go, okay? Wonderful, so I state your name. I, Kristen Peterson. Do solemnly swear or affirm to solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies against all enemies foreign and domestic foreign and domestic that I will bear truth, true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully, and that I will well and faithfully, discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. Discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. And is Margo ready? Ready. Wonderful, so. We'll do the same thing. You can raise your right hand. Great. I state your name. I, Margo Kaiser. Do solemnly swear or affirm. 
do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, against all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States, to the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely, that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. <laughs> and that I will well and faithfully and I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. Discharge the duties of which I am about to enter. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Council Member Kaiser. Um, would you like to say a few words before we move on to the, the next item? Sure, just quickly, I wanted to say thank you for all my supporters um, and putting your trust in me, um, people that endorsed me, uh, helped me hang door hangers, posted signs, things like that. It truly, from the bottom of my heart, has meant a lot on this, uh, this new venture. And I can't wait to work more closely with the community and really get behind Capitola and our, our comeback from COVID. Let's do it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Council Member Kaiser. Um, we're going to move on now to uh, item 3D, Council Reorganization for 2021. Um, this is the point where Council members nominate and elect a new mayor and vice mayor for the coming year. Um, before we move into uh, hearing motions on this item, if I may take a, a couple moments um, to, to speak to uh, my, my re-election in my year as, as mayor. Um, I felt very blessed four years ago to have been elected to Capitola City Council. And at the time, I lived on Depot Hill, and I would stand at the top of the hill and, and, and look out over the village. And it was this overwhelming feeling of um, community and gratitude. And I couldn't imagine having the opportunity to, to be a part of the, the Capitola City Council. I was lucky enough, as I mentioned previously, to spend the whole year that I was running in 2016 uh, learning from uh, Council Member Botorf and his time as mayor. And, and in my years on the council, I have got to witness uh, and, and learn from and be a recipient of the um, knowledge and experience of all of the mayors that have come since then, Mike Termini and Stephanie Harlan and Jacques Bertrand. Um, Sam, I wasn't around when you were mayor, but I'm, I'm, you know, the time's coming. So um, I want to thank uh, everyone that I have served on council with in these last four years because I have learned so much, um, not only about what it means to be a council member, but about being a good community member, about being a good person, a good friend, a good leader. Um, and I could not have, have asked for more in that regard. And I want to thank everyone who has supported me in my original um, election in 2016 and my re-election in, in 2020, um, especially this year because it was a difficult year um, for people to, to campaign or support candidates. And so I, I am so very grateful for every single person who has supported me. No one accomplishes anything alone, and I am certainly um, no exception to that. Um, I, I, I also want to take this moment to, to thank my, my family. Um, everything I have ever been or ever will be is because of uh, my parents and my family, my supported, or excuse me, my uh, extended family, uh, to my partner Nick and all the support that he has provided to me. I, I simply could not have survived <laughs> the past four years, and especially not this year, um, without that kind of love and support. Speaking specifically to my year as mayor this year, it was so different than I expected it would be. It was a year of challenges and difficulties um, 
and I certainly learned a lot about crisis management. <laughs> and um, I, I am grateful for the support of our city manager, of our vice mayor, uh, Vice Mayor Brooks, for all of the support and assistance that she has provided me of all the frantic phone calls to both uh, Vice Mayor Brooks and uh, City Manager Goldstein when, when things looked like they were, they were just piling up this year. But at the same time, I could not be more grateful to have had the opportunity uh, to be the mayor of this fantastic city. Um, and I, I just want to express thanks to, to my, my fellow council members for entrusting me with, with this responsibility this year. Um, and to all of our residents, um, and to all of our residents. It's, it's really been an honor to be your mayor this year. And I'm excited to continue to serve on your council in the next four years. Mayor Peterson, before you go, um, not go very far. <laughs> before we move further with um, item 3D, I just like to say a couple of words about you. Um, I believe there's a little package you have in front of you before you open it. Um, I just wanted to say tonight I have the honor of recognizing Kristen Peterson for all of her hard work as mayor for the city of Capitola in what I would describe as one of our city's most challenging years. Kristen's dedication to our community and its members is clear. She is a champion of women and for equity. She has dedicated endless hours to keeping Capitola healthy and vibrant and even takes the time to call her neighbors to simply check in. Kristen has continued the practice of past mayors to ensure that all voices in our community are heard and valued and always seeks the middle ground when conflict arises. In a small community like Capitola, connectivity and transparency is essential. And this past year, you could count on Kristen to forge a path forward as our city faced a worldwide pandemic, fires, and huge budget deficits. Kristen ha has been and will continue to be a leader I aspire to, and I'm humbled to sit next to her on the dais and on Zoom. Thank you, Kristen, for all that you um, do and will continue to do for our beautiful town, Capitola. If you want to open the gift. Yes, I have a, a, a box that was delivered to me today. Oh. Uh, it's a travel. It says, Kristen Peterson, Mayor, City of Capitola, 2020. Congratulations, thank Kristen, on your newly, uh, your reelection, and thank you again for all that you've done. Thank you. I'm, I'm so, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. And I, I'll make this quick because I know we need to move on, but I think it's, um, just a funny, a funny story. As, as I was getting ready today, I, I was looking at a, a candle holder I have in my house that, and this might come as a surprise to many of you, um, but years ago I uh, competed in the Miss Santa Cruz County 2005 pageant and got the Miss Congeniality Award. And so I think it's funny that when I looked at that and saw Miss Congeniality 2005, and then I look at this and see Mayor of Capitola 2020, and I think, wow, what a difference 15 years makes. So <laughs> again, Thank you very much um, for the opportunity to have this year of service. Um, Madam Mayor. If, if yes, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but maybe before we move on, um, I wanted to um, just recognize your year of service as mayor. You know, invariably, it seems like every mayor confronted with a particular um, challenge uh, a difficulty during the course of their tenure. But in all my years, I don't believe I've seen a mayor that has been confronted with the, such a challenge that has been so dramatic, that has been so shifting, and has been so persistent. And I just want to um, um, tell you how much, I mean, I have appreciated how well you have handled the COVID pandemic uh, and the changes that it has brought and how you have guided and led us through a, a whole new way of being. And you've done that with, with great confidence um, and I think great calm 
uh, and composure. Um, you've almost made this seem normal. Um, so I want to thank you for that and to recognize what you have gone through. And on top of that, you ran a re-election campaign um, and, was, and, and were re-elected, so congratulations. Um, but, and I, I want to, I look forward to continuing to serve with you. Um, but thank you for your year of, of mayorship. Um, and always remember, once a mayor, always a mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Story. I appreciate that. Uh, Councilmember Bertrand, you have your hand up also? Yeah, I'd like to say that um, I think anyone listening to our city council meetings and seeing you run the meetings would say, hey, just like Sam said, everything's normal. So you transformed what was rather chaotic around everyone in this town, and you made them feel that this city had it under control. And I think that took a lot of oomph, a lot of character, and I've seen you grow over this year. This year has been hard for you in many ways, a new job, uh, comfort of a new uh, excuse me, partner. I mean, just many things that many people would find. I'm going to only focus on that, but you had to focus on so many things. No matter who, no matter who zoomed in our meeting, they thought Capitola was going steady on, and you're the one that did that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Bertrand. That's really kind. I really appreciate that. All right. We are on. Uh, we are still on item uh, 3D, and so this is a time for city council members to nominate and elect a new mayor and vice mayor, and I think we're going to start, uh, we're going to do this in two. So we're going to start with the uh, nomination of a new mayor, and then I will turn it over to the new mayor, and we will um, move on to the nomination of a new uh, vice mayor. If I may, uh, Mayor uh, Peterson, I would, uh, it's my honor to nominate uh, Vice Mayor Brooks um, as mayor um, for the next year. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. I think it's a very smart motion in a second. <laughs> uh, do we uh, have any uh, public comment on this item before we, uh, before we vote? Mayor Peterson, we have one comment, uh, Supervisor Brand. Thank you, Mayor Peterson. Thank you, Larry. Um, I'm very excited uh, that the council has chosen to nominate Vice Mayor Brooks. Uh, this entire county has been making history this year, and the city of Capitol is no different. If I'm not mistaken, it'll be the first uh, Latina mayor in, in Capitol City history. And uh, what an amazing thing to have happen tonight. Uh, Vice Mayor Brooks, you as Council Member Bottorf had noted, uh, are just a, a breath of fresh air remarkable energy for the city of Capitola. And for those of you who don't interact with me that much, a fierce advocate to the county on behalf of the city of Capitola, uh, Vice Mayor Brooks does not take no for an answer. In fact, she doesn't really ask. She tells you how things are going to be. And that's exactly the kind of representative that the city of Capitola deserves. She's going to be an outstanding mayor. I fully support this motion and appreciate the opportunity to address you tonight. And also welcome count the new council member, Margot. Uh, uh, looking forward to working with you, too. Thank you, Supervisor Friend. Um, do we have any additional public comment? I'll turn it to our moderator to let us know. Mayor Peterson, I do not see any additional public comment. Great. With that, we will bring it back to Council. Uh, we have a motion and a second. There's no additional Council comments. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Kaiser. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Councilmember Story. Aye. And Mayor Brooks. Aye. Thank you so much. All right, I'll turn it over to you, Mayor Brooks. Congratulations. Thank you very much everybody um as before we take it to the second piece i just uh like to say just a few words um i i just want to first thank my colleagues for making this happen tonight it is my true honor to serve as your mayor for the next year 
I wanted to share with you a quick story, and I know there's been a lot of them tonight, but I just wanted to share a quick story about my path into office. It actually begins when I was in fifth grade. I lived on a very busy neighborhood street in San Jose. Right across the street from my childhood home was a head start and a walkway to my elementary school. And every day I would walk across the street and often would think to my young self, gosh, this is a really dangerous road to cross and people need to slow down. And at, at that time, I knew nothing about the city nor how it functions. And when I brought this up to my teacher, she encouraged me to write a letter to my city council about my concerns. Well, for some reason, my letter received traction, and not too long afterwards, the city put up a slow children crossing sign. I could not believe it. I could not believe that something was actually being done and that my 10-year-old voice mattered. I could not believe there were others who cared just as much as I did about my neighborhood. And now, as I think back to that experience, I realize that my success could not have been achieved alone. It took the encouragement of my family, my parents, Carol and Oscar, who are here tonight, the teacher, the city officials, plus a little determination of my own for that sign to go up. It took all of us together to be able to do good. It was a true testament to democracy. And that is why I sit here before you tonight to simply continue to do good for you and others in the community. Capitola is an amazing community, one that I believe people can only dream of, and it is my honor to be part of it. I intend to help our city find balance and security as we move through the pandemic and begin to rebuild. It is so important to me that we focus on supporting all people in our community and focus on equity in all aspects of our city planning. So thank you again to everyone. I see all of my family and friends on the Zoom panel members uh, list there. I see my beautiful, smart daughter, Sedona, and my supporting husband, Larry. Thank you for being here tonight, and congratulations to our newest council member. I look forward to working with all of you. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead, and for my family who's watching, you may go now. You guys don't have to stick around. <laughs> um, but for uh, entertain a motion for vice mayor at this I would uh, like to make a motion for Councilmember Story to serve as Vice Mayor if he will accept that nomination. I'll accept that and I'll second that. Great, we have a first and a second. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes. Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Kaiser. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Vice Mayor Story. Oh, I, you know, Chloe kind of cut out, so. Oh, I'm no, so sorry. Okay. That, um, you. Yeah, I just wanted to say I, I accept the nomination. Uh, and vote uh, yes. Thank you, and Mayor Brooks. Aye, congratulations, Vice Mayor Sam Story. Now we'll move on to item four for additional material. Um, City Clerk, do we have any additional materials at this time? Yes, we had several. There were additional materials for items 8C and 8D, as well as 9C and 9D. Great. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna move on to item five, additions and deletions to agenda. City Manager, are there any changes to tonight's agenda? Staff has no changes. Okay, thank you. Next item we have is item six for public comment. Do we have any public comment for items not on tonight's agenda? Mayor Brooks, I do not see any uh, attendees with their hands raised, and I do not see any emails. Okay, great. Seeing none, we'll move on to item seven, city council and staff comments. This is a time where city council members and staff may comment on matters of a general nature or identify issues for staff response or future council considerations. Um, you have a, they have two minutes to speak at this time. Do we have
have any city council comments? Okay, I'm just checking for any hands. I see none. Any staff comments? Mayor Brooks, I do have one announcement I would like to make. First, there is an update on the pandemic situation in our county that's in your agenda packet on consent. I'm not going to pull that off, but I just wanted to reiterate to everybody that I know that this has been a very long and difficult haul for all of us. Um, we're more than nine months into this situation, and I think it's uh, been getting old. But I just wanted to stress that uh, at no other point in the pandemic have we had as high prevalence of this horrible disease as we have in our community now. And this is really the opportunity for everybody to double down on their um, best behavior. Uh, our hospitals are filling up, and now is not the time to relax anyone's attention. In addition, I also just wanted to briefly announce that the County of Santa Cruz um, today submitted their plan on the good news, their plan for the state of California for their vaccination program. Um, in that plan, they talk about who's going to be the first people to get it, and they do expect the very first deliveries, and this won't be for the broad community, but this will be for folks who care for people who are suffering from COVID. Um, they do expect a limited initial delivery coming up next week. So very exciting times, and I really just encourage everybody uh, to redouble their efforts and to understand that hopefully there is a light at the end of this tunnel. Thank you, Jamie. Okay, moving forward, we're on to item eight, consent calendar. All items listed on the consent calendar will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. There will be no separate discussion on these items prior to the time the city council votes on the action unless members of the city council request specific items to be discussed for separate review. Items pulled forward, uh, pulled separate will be considered um, following the gov uh, general government. Are there uh, any council members who would like to pull an item on the consent? Okay, I don't see any. So any um, members of the public who would like to comment on any of the consent items? Mayor Brooks, I do not see any attendees uh, asking to comment on this. Okay, so then I'll go ahead and ask for a roll call vote. I'm sorry, has there been a motion? I'm sorry, I'll pardon move. me. I need to make a yeah. Yeah. I'll move the consent calendar. Thank you. A second. Thank you. Now may we have a roll call. Yes, Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Kaiser. Hi. Council Member Peterson. My apologies. Hi. Vice Mayor Story. Hi. And Mayor Brooks. Hi. Thank you. That passes. Now we're going to move on to item 9B, the fiscal year 2021 budget update. Can I have a report from staff, please? So before our finance director gives the report, I just want to interject a little bit, give a little bit of context here. But the first thing I will note is that overall, um, the news is good, which I think is really um, a testament to the hard work that this council and uh, the entire city has done over the last nine, 10 months. Um, you may recall that we had a, a grand jury report recently that was talking about how cities need to manage risk differently. And, and personally, I had a slightly different take on that that analysis. And, and what I have always taken away from all my experience working with cities is the number one thing for a city to do uh, to respond to threats and risks is, is number one, is, is to be adaptable and to, to take action and decisive action when necessary um, and make decisions. And I want to commend the city because we, we did that. Uh, at the front end of this pandemic, we were faced with very difficult financial decisions. We made those difficult decisions. And that has put us in a far stronger place than many other cities around this state. So with that, I want to turn it over to Jim, who's going to lead us through this presentation this evening uh, on the mid-year budget update. Jim? Thank you, Jimmy. Mayor, if, if I may, Jim, before you start, I just had a question about, uh, as a point of order, um, did we skip over item 9A, which is the review initial council appointment? Vice Mayor Story, absolutely. I'm keeping you on your toes tonight, you know, as, as a vice mayor to keep me in line. 
Well, I think it, it's at your discretion whether you want to proceed with 9B or and come back to 9A, but Let's go ahead and do that since um, Jim is on online here. Thank you so much, Vice Mayor Story. Thank you, Mayor Bruce. Let me take one moment to share my screen. Can everyone see that fine? Okay, thank you. As uh, City Manager Goldstein just mentioned, this is our first quarter update. So to just go over a couple of the highlights from the first quarter, um, our sales tax is performing very similar to last year. So this year we're slightly below $2 million of sales tax revenue. Last year we were slightly over. So this is um, much better than we had anticipated nine months ago and where we would be right now. Um, this puts us at 16% above our adopted budget. And if you recall, we had reduced our budget this year by 21% from the prior year. Um, from transit occupancy tax, continues to outpace projections. Year to date, we received a little over 635,000 compared to about 718, 718,000 last year. That represents 80% of our amended budget, which is just a little below 800,000. And if you recall, our adopted budget had reduced this revenue by 71% from the prior year. Um, we saw better than anticipated numbers coming in early, so we had amended that in September to equal 50%, and we're still outpacing those projections. Um, parking revenue is also doing better than anticipated. We've received um, a little over $316,000 this year versus just slightly under $438,000 in the prior year. That represents 70 4% of our adopted budget, which as a reminder was reduced by 50% from the prior year. On the expenditure side, our expenditures are down a little over $725,000 from the prior year and are tracking on budget. As far as a, a review, um, so my qualifying statement before I start running through this is on the taxes, our revenues, we would be comparing for a quarter, 25%. All other items that we talk about, we went ahead and ran numbers through October just because they're available and we wanted to have the most current data. So again, taxes, look at 25%, everything else we should be bouncing around 33%. So you can see taxes are right on schedule, slightly below last year, but um, doing much better than anticipated. I think that's a 3%, my screen's a little funky right now. Um, licenses and permits are flat. They're only at 16%, but just, um, Last week, we sent out our business license renewals, and we started receiving payments this week, and those payments will continue through the middle of January, so that number will look better the next time we talk about um, this revenue source. Intergovernmental revenue is way up from last year, and that's primarily due to the $125,000 of CARES funding that we got, um, and we've received all of that. Charges for services are down. We anticipated this, so although they are down, they're about where we expected them to be. Fines and for forfeitures, basically the same thing, down slightly from the prior year, um, or down a little bit from the prior year, but, but tracking on budget with what we had anticipated. And uses of money and property also down. That, that's really um, interest earnings driving that. So we have the same cash balances or similar cash balances this time of year that we had last year. It's just the interest rates are that tanked on us. And then other revenues are tracking right along with about where we had anticipated they would be. So as of right now, total revenues, 26% of budget that's being brought down a little bit artificially low by the taxes. Again, those, those revenues will catch up. Property tax was due today, so we'll see those payments coming to the city um, towards the end of this month, early January. And then uh, we're only down a little over eight and a half percent from where we were this time last year. So staff is going to be recommending some proposed revenue budget amendments. Uh, those will total a little over 1.4 million and consist of $700,000 of the increase to sales tax, 330, a little over 333,000 of uh, TOT. That's the non-restricted portion that stays within the general fund. Increasing parking meter and pay station revenue by a little over 214,000. Uh, the TOT revenue that's restricted for early childhood and youth programs increased 8,700. And the TOT restricted for local business groups increased by 9,900. And then we were also awarded a um, grant, SB2 grant, 
So we'd like to um, amend the budget to be able to recognize that revenue, one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. There'll be a um, equal amount on the expenditure side, so that we can um, execute that grant. We do have a couple of decreases proposed, um, totaling one hundred eighty thousand. That's recreation class fees, one hundred seventy-five thousand. When we first adopted the budget or were preparing the budget in spring, we weren't really sure what we were going to be able to do with class fees, and we had so many different things going on um, in discussions with the recreation supervisor. The, the expenses for this revenue source are really tied to the revenue, so we kind of let that one just stay pat to see how it would perform. It's, we're not able to do as many classes that we had hoped to do, so we're going to um, request to reduce that revenue by 175. And similar on the um, sports fees, we just can't have the, the not able to do those things, so another reduction of uh, 5000 So the net proposed increase to the revenue budget is um, one million two hundred forty-six dollars, two hundred and forty-six. One million two hundred forty-six thousand four fifty-seven. Um, as far as comparing this year to last year on performance, I have um, some selective revenue sources on the left column there. The next column over is our budget, how much we reduce the um, Bradley Burns measure O and measure F, or each reduced just a little bit under twenty-one percent. TOT, again, originally it was 75, it's amended to a little bit over 50%. Uh, parking was 50% reduced, and then the um, other two or other three categories there. Our, our, that next column over actual first quarter, that's our performance. So Bradley Burns, believe it or not, is actually a little bit higher right now um, by 1%. But measure O and measure F are lagging a little bit, 10% and just under 12% respectively. <clears throat> and look, I want to uh, let me go across from the top now. Um, on the recommended new budget, what we're talking about in that minus 10% is amending the budget to be basically 90% of the prior year. So we, uh, the amendment would take us to um, just a 10% reduction. And on the measure L and measure F, it would be just under 17% on those. For um, TOT, and then it has the dollar amounts on the right hand side. Uh, the TOT right now, our actual um, performance is down of just under 10.5%. So the um, new recommended new budget would be a reduction or 75% of last year, reducing it by 25% from the prior year, <clears throat> which is an kind of increase over there on the right-hand column, 333000 Parking, we had reduced originally by 50%. Actual performance is um, just under 19 so we are recommending to take that to a reduction of 25. Um, the recreation classes in sports, again, we didn't do a whole lot of that just to see how that would play out. Uh, we're down almost 90% there, so we're suggesting to reduce that by 68.8, see if we can do some different things in the first quarter, and then we can revisit this one um, at our next budget amendment or the budget review. <clears throat> Excuse me, state grant revenue, that's just Putting in that SB2 grant, we didn't have anything budgeted. We didn't get the grant until after the budget was adopted. And then our other general revenues, was, it's down 54%. A lot of that timing stuff, it's a lot smaller dollars. So we're just going to kind of keep track of that as we would in a normal year and then come back at the next budget review, which would be the same as our mid-year in a normal year, and see what recommendations we need to do, if any, at that point. So in total, our current budget on these revenue sources was reduced by just under 22%, actual performance a little bit over 12. So we'd like to um, take that 22 or 21.8% down to 13.7 and increase revenues by the 1.2 million as, as I stated before. I'm gonna do a quick um, expenditure review. So again, um, these one, that percent of budget in that third column or middle column there, we're, we're comparing against 33% of the year. Personnel, while it's down from the prior year, if you recall, we make our um, PERS UAL payment, a lump sum payment at the beginning of the year. It enables us to save about $50,000 over the course of the year rather than paying monthly. So that number will smooth out as we get deeper into the year. Um, but that, that was a $210,000 increase this year, and that's what's making that number look a little bit high with that lump sum payment. Contract services uh, down, that's one of our, our Biggest areas that we cut 486,000, and tracking pretty much on budget, 
training and memberships are also down um, and tracking a little bit better than budget at this point. Supplies also down, tracking on budget, and internal service funds, 25%. We do those uh, transfers into the internal service fund quarterly, so that's why that one should say 25%, so that's right on target. Um, so total expenses are 38.2% um, of our budget. Again, that's bumped up a little bit from the, the CalPERS UAL. And um, percentage-wise down, we are down at 12.2 from the prior year. And I'm going to turn it over to the city manager, and he's going to go through some proposed expenditure budget amendments. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Looks like some of my highlights stayed on the screen. Sorry about that. It's all right. Um, so there's a number of new expenditures that we are proposing at this mid-year budget point. Um, one key one is the lifeguard contract with the city of Santa Cruz. Uh, we have been in discussions with the city of Santa Cruz, and uh, we expect to bring a contract for services uh, for lifeguards to city council in January. And so we would recommend making a budget amendment now so that we have the resources necessary to pay for that. In addition, uh, you may recall that we cut out our contribution to the Regional Homeless Action Partnership. This is a, a partnership between all of the cities and the county that's been going on for more than two decades and involves everybody, all the cities uh, contributing uh, a, a proportional share based on population for the winter shelter each winter, as well as for the biannual census and some other miscellaneous costs we do regionally uh, in our homeless prevention efforts. Uh, the 20,000 does not represent Capitola's full contribution to the HAP, um, but it is 50% of our typical contribution. And I am recommending it at this point because these regional collaboration, this regional collaboration has been going on for so long. Uh, it's important and obviously to the extent the capital is not contributing, it certainly weakens that uh, collaboration in the future. We are also suggesting a $500 per council member training budget. You will recall this was cut entirely uh, last spring. Um, in particular, there are a number of virtual conferences that I know that could be valuable, particularly for our new council members to participate, new council members to participate in as, um, as we all start to learn the ropes of, of new positions. So we are recommending a $500 per council member training budget for the remainder of this fiscal year. We have $20,000 that we're suggesting for the janitorial services to augment public works. Uh, you'll recall we did this at the last quarterly update. It's proven to be very effective in freeing up our crews to do more um, kind of a heavy lifting work. And the janitorial service contract has, has freed them up from needing to take care of the public restrooms as frequently. We're also suggesting $5,000 to begin some um, uh, fire suppression planning for the eucalyptus grove on Park Avenue that the city owns. Uh, this was something that came to our public works director's attention during the, the, the fires this summer, uh, that probably we, we, we can do more in terms of long-term planning and developing some sort of strategy about how we manage that, that open space. Uh, then in addition, we are proposing $450,000 that goes into our ISFs. Uh, I'm sure council is well aware that this doesn't actually involve spending the money. This is transferring the funds into these internal service funds. These internal service funds are intended to smooth out multi-year acquisitions. Uh, and so in a sense, when we wouldn't, didn't put funding into those accounts this year, um, it was in a, in a way a bit of deficit spending in the sense that we are still incurring costs to pay for equipment, vehicles, things like that each year. Um, by not funding it, we were really just pushing those costs into a future year. So we are recommending um, that $450,000 transfer. Uh, we, we are suggesting $2,500. Um, the city of Santa Cruz has a lifeguard tower that they have made available to the city of Capitola. We're actually still negotiating with them on price. Uh, we're hoping that if we do end up getting it, it would be less than $2,500. But, but at this point, our towers are quite old, and we believe that the city of Santa Cruz's extra tower is actually in better shape than anything we currently have. And then lastly, um, we're proposing $160,000 uh, amendment related to the SB2 grant. The SB2 grant, you'll recall, is funding from the state to help with housing production. Uh, we are, you'll recall, in the grant that we have um, identified tasks associated with developing um, design guidelines. Um, what do we call them? The design guidelines that 
not objective, objective design guidelines that would allow us to review and potentially hold up multi-residential and residential housing to objective standards. In addition, we're developing some, um, some uh, plans for prototypical ADUs to help streamline the path to new ADUs. So that's, this is simply amending the budget to recognize that revenue, uh, as well as also making available some revenue for city staff to work directly on the grant. The next slide, Jim. In addition, uh, as you'll notice later on the site's agenda, is we have new MOU agreements with our employee groups. Uh, we are proposing to per increase personnel costs for $112,000 for the remainder of this fiscal year. Um, that is associated with two things. One is ending the furlough and implementing cost of living adjustments for employees, as well as also filling one of our vacancies in the police department and offering a promotional opportunity to, uh, for, a, for a new sergeant. Um, the ongoing cost for all of these changes would actually total out to, uh, I believe it's, oh, uh, help me out here, Jim. Looks like the ongoing cost is, I guess, close to $600,000 for these things. So I think it's good to think about those in terms of the $600,000 expenditure. We are not going to incur, incur that much cost this fiscal year because there's only six months left in this fiscal year. Um, we are also decreasing some of the, the revenue, uh, sorry, the expenditures that we have in our budget in the recreation department. These were expenditures that are associated with our, uh, the contract employees who teach our classes because the classes aren't taking place this year. Uh, we won't be uh, expending those funds. So overall, the net increased expenditures comes out for this fiscal year of $767,000. Uh, with those changes, we anticipate that we will be increasing our general fund balance by just under $500,000 this year, which would leave a fund balance at the end of this fiscal year of $1.5 million. And so with that, I'll turn it back to Jim. Thanks, James. So just to go over uh, a couple of final things on, on the funds here for um, our, our other funds, internal service funds, this is showing, as Jamie mentioned, this is transferring money from the general fund over to the ISS. So this is just the other side of that transaction, recognizing those funds moving over. In the general plan update and maintenance fund, and these are special revenue funds where um, we can only make expenditures for allowable items within those specific funds, is to increase expenditures by 25000 for um, planning and housing consultants to work on the LCP Coastal Commission certification. And um, also in the Supplemental Law Enforcement Services Fund, increased expenditures by 50,000. We've been slowly replacing, or we had a plan to slowly replace uh, radios in the police department. When we took a look at this fund, we realized that we hadn't been spending all of our money in past years. So we wanted to pull, we built up about a $75,000 fund balance plus we get about $100,000 a year. So we want to utilize about 50,000 of that fund balance and just replace all radios in, in, at one time. Uh, village parking, uh, uh, each year the BIA, as you know, requests to uh, suspend parking meter and safe station operation from the day after Thanksgiving through Christmas. Council has authorized this in prior years. Um, this year at the November 12th meeting, we did not approve um, suspending the parking meter and case stations for this holiday season, but the staff, um, council requested staff to return the evening for a further discussion when we had a better idea of what the budget numbers look like. If we decide to, if council decides to suspend parking meter and case station operation through Christmas, estimated revenue loss is between five and 10,000. And I um, understand that we could have that if approved operational by the end of day next Monday the 13th. Um, all of these items, the village parking, as well as all of the budget review and staff's recommendation, we had a special fact meeting this past Tuesday, and all of these topics were discussed. And the, the Finance Advisory Committee made three recommendations. The first was to accept staff's recommended budget amendments and adopt the proposed resolution. The second was to set aside somewhere between four hundred to six hundred thousand dollars as a COVID contingency to ensure the ongoing operations and delivery of services throughout the pandemic. And the third was to implement free parking in the village through December 25th. Just as a reminder, um, as far as our schedule, staff plans on returning to council in January to go through the city council goal setting. 
Our next budget update um, is going to be March 11th. I just found out today that we will receive our second quarter, which is October through December sales tax data on February 22nd. That's normally when we would do the mid-year budget update, but I think it's it's worth waiting one more meeting to get that data and do that budget review uh, March 11th. And then just as a reminder, March 1st, we will begin our budget process for fiscal year 21-22. So recommended action this evening is to receive the fiscal year 2021 first quarter budget update and adopt proposed resolution amending the fiscal year 2021 budget. Consider fact recommendations and provide direction to staff on those recommendations and then any other additional direction to staff um, regarding any other budget changes. And that concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jamie. Do we have any um, council questions at this time? Okay. Um, I see Vice Mayor Story hand up. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. Um, Jim and Jamie, I guess I wanted to, uh, one asked about the uh, Finance Advisory Committee recommendation that set aside 400 to 600,000 uh, for COVID relief. I was just uh, curious about the mechanism for that. Um, are they proposing to take it from our projected uh, year-end fund balance and uh, kind of uh, make a restricted account? Um, tell me more about uh, that recommendation. So I, I think that is basically the recommendation was that, you know, there, we do have members of the Finance Advisory Committee who can chime in here. Uh, I will just give a brief overview and then either um, Mayor Brooks or Council Member Peterson, you can chime in. My understanding was that understanding that the potential for further shutdowns or further economic impacts from COVID are, are still real, that we would uh, set aside between four and six hundred thousand dollars to buffer those impacts. And uh, Jim and I have talked about how best to do that. And I think that there would be a couple choices for council. Probably the most easy way to do it would be similar to the way we set aside funding for the employee first time uh, home, home buyer program, the three hundred thousand dollars through a designation process. Alternatively, I think we could return in January with a resolution to move it into the contingency for a limited period of time, and then it could be moved back out if it wasn't needed. Um, and Mayor Brooks and Councilmember Peterson, if you have anything else to add from the facts recommendation, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Council Member Peterson, I think you covered it all, Jamie. Um, the only thing that would have to be discussed tonight is uh, where, how much it would be. I think Jim was able to kind of look at the numbers um, of what we initially needed to to put aside and came up with this kind of range. Was that, is that right, Jim? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So we're, I'm not sure if there were any other questions, um, Vice Mayor Story. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, one other question about the uh, SBT grant. Um, it was listed that there may be some staff costs of about 20000 to 25000 um, will that um, be um, chargeable to the grant? The, yes. The staff yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I see Council Member Bertrand's hand up. Thank Thank you. Member, okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I like the um, idea of this. A parking card to the merchant. So I look forward to that report from um, Cal. I believe you're working with Cal to determine how that would work out. I guess my only concern is um, I hope it's not abuse. You know, I think it's a good idea. Um, in terms of the sales, cons uh, tax sales consultant that you're going to be meeting with, um, I'm very interested in the results of that because if our projections turn dire, um, this could be an early warning that we're going to have to adjust fairly soon. And then I wanted to understand about the new rules for the executive system, excuse me, and the um, there's some half 
half-time positions, rex coordinator, and executive assistant roles. So I didn't understand if they're full-time or half-time or half-time being converted to full-time. I just wanted a clarification of that. So, so the position, the, the two half-time positions that we are currently recruiting for um, in City Hall are the deputy clerk and the new personnel analyst. But those positions replaced the executive assistants who recently retired. Those positions were authorized, uh, I believe, at a meeting last month, uh, maybe right. maybe in September. So they, they're actually they're not uh, they're they're not up for a vote this evening. Okay, just want some clarification there. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Are there any other questions, uh, Councilman Bertrand? I do still see your hand raised. If you don't. Um, yeah, I got to get it down. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, if we can, if there's any questions from the public. Mayor Brooks, at this time, I do not see any uh, hands raised uh, from the attendees on this item. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close public hearing and bring it back to council for discussion and action. Jim, do you want to pull up the fact recommendation so everyone can see that again? And I see Vice Mayor Sam Story's hand raised. Oh, here they all come. <laughs> there we go. Vice Mayor Story, would you like to begin? Oh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I, one, I think this is um, a quite a relief from what we were looking at um, last spring when the uh, pandemic had first hit us. Um, and so, um, you know, with that, I would like to make a motion that we accept uh, the staff's recommendation concerning the budget amendment, um, as well as to accept uh, the um, uh, Finance Advisory Committee's recommendations um, uh, to, uh, to have a, a COVID uh, set-aside account uh, in the event that we should have um, no further, um, you know, reductions. Um, and since we're still in the midst of the pandemic, um, I would like to also recommend that we direct staff to look at setting aside uh, 600,000 um, in that um, with that range, um, as well as to approve uh, the free parking in the village uh, starting December 13th and through December 25th. So, okay. I'll just state that as a motion. I'll second that. We have a first and a second. Thank you. Um, I almost said mayor, sorry. Council member Peterson, your hand is still raised. Did you want to add anything to that? No, I was just going to comment on the facts, um, unanimous recommendation to implement the free parking in the village for the next two weeks. Um, so I, I want to thank uh, Vice Mayor Story for his uh, support of, of that recommendation from the fact. I think it's really important for the business owners, um, and and the general consensus in the fact was that you know this is a time of goodwill. Um, they they weren't able to have free parking for the first two weeks, but the next two weeks would be a good opportunity for them. And so I, I want to um, just reiterate that 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 was unanimous among staff members, and to thank Council Member Story, or excuse me, Vice Mayor Story. Um, for um, including that in his motion. Wonderful, thank you. We have a first and a second. We're still open for discussion. Council Member Bertrand. Yes, I just want to thank the FAC for weighing in on these recommendations, uh, the COVID uh, contingency fund in particular, and certainly supporting our continual support of the merchants downtown during this time with the free parking. Great, thank you. And I see Council Member Kaiser's hand raised. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I, uh, I appreciate all of these um, things coming to us with uh, great knowledge and we're definitely having to change things up this year and think a little outside the box. Um, the parking, I am a huge advocate for. I'm really glad we're bringing that back to light. Um, 
it, with that said, I think it's something to be looked at maybe for next year, um, while we still may be coming back from this financially, to possibly sort of implement a little more um, restricted parking or figure out a certain time of day that that will get more people down there, say at night when there's less people down there, it's cold, it may be raining, but during the day, as Ed had brought up last meeting, you know, uh, people that aren't spending money are coming and using the free parking. So we want to utilize it, but also maybe streamline it a little bit. But I'm stoked to have it for the rest of the month. I think it'll be great for the merchants. Thank you, Council Member Kaiser. And we have a first and a second. Can I have a roll call, please? Yes, Council Member Bertrand. I agree. Council Member Kaiser. I agree. Council Member Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. And Mayor Brooks. Aye. All right. Just because it was my first meeting, I had to shake it up. So now we're going to go back to item 9A, review initial council appointments. At this time, I'll ask for a staff report. Yes. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. I'll be providing the report. So if you give me one moment to switch hats here and share the slideshow. Okay. And, okay, one moment. Okay, thank you, Mayor Brooks and Council. Can everyone hear me? Great, thank you. So this is just going to be a brief report. We're hopefully going to go over just a few appointments that council has to make for city advisory bodies as well as some regional bodies that you yourselves sit on as our representatives. So just a brief over overview. The city here in Capitola, we have established multiple city advisory bodies on which um, citizens sit as your representatives for more specific topics, such as the Art and Cultural Commission, for example, whereas there are multi-jurisdictional advisory bodies, either in the county or regional, where members of council themselves serve as Capitola's representatives for more bigger picture issues and topics. So I think we're all familiar with that, but we wanted to just do a brief overview. Tonight, we will be making a point, you will, excuse me, be making appointments only for advisory bodies that have meetings in early January. We wanted to take care of this now and then we will come back in January at that first meeting, the city council meeting on January 14th to finish this item and provide representation on all boards, committees and commissions that will be having meetings in 2021. So tonight, we will, the appointments will be for the city bodies on our planning commission and the art and cultural commission for the multi-jurisdictional bodies, there are um, just a few that I'm not going to read because we're going to talk about them one by one. So uh, I will just ask the council to affirm or to make their appointment. It doesn't need to be a full um, roll call vote each time. So each slide has a different commission board or committee. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. Oh, and I believe actually, I'm so sorry, we wanted to go to public comment just on the basic item first, and then we'll go through each one. Thank you, Chloe. So at this time, we'll go ahead and um, I'll ask the moderator for if there's any public comment. Mayor Brooks, I do not see anybody, any attendees with their hand raised for comment on this item. Great, thank you. We'll go ahead and return back to you, Chloe. Thank you. So our first city advisory body, like mentioned, the Planning Commission, technically all five um, seated commissioners, their terms are expiring. Uh, four of them are considered incumbent commissioners. They're listed here with their corresponding council member appointee, uh, appointer, I should say. They have all indicated their interest in continuing on Planning Commission. The new council member Kaiser has yet to make an appointment. That would be done tonight. We received two applications. Their names are listed here. One from Paul Esty and a second from Susan Westman. Their applications were included in the agenda packet. Um, and so there was time to review those. 
So what I think would be easiest if, um, if our current council who's been seated before would like to affirm that they want to reappoint their incumbent commissioner, we can run through that first and then we'll have uh, council member Kaiser make her appointment. Is that all right? That sounds great. Okay, so uh, Mayor Brooks, would you like to reappoint Courtney? Yes. Wonderful. And how about Vice Mayor Story? Would you like to reappoint Mick Ruth? Yes. Thank you. Council member Bertrand, your appointee is Ed Newman. Would you like to reappoint him? Definitely. Thank you. And Councilmember Peterson, your appointee, Peter Wilk. Do you want to keep him on board? Yes. Thank you. Yes, I've had a good working relationship with him, and I'm, I'm excited to have him on the planning commission. Thank you. So Thanks. that's great. And then um, I'll turn to you, Councilmember Kaiser. I'll be appointing Susan Westman. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, so for our next city body, it's even easier. For Art and Cultural Commission, four out of the seven uh, members have expiring terms. However, the terms, they don't, um, they need to be renewed, but they can do as many terms as they'd like moving forward. There's no term limits. So they're listed here. There's uh, two at-large members, one artist, and one art professional member that have all indicated their desire to continue. Um, since it's just uh, the council as a whole that makes these appointments, you can all affirm that you're all right with these, these four. And I just wanted to point out we did not receive any new applications for this commission. So let's just run through um, in affirming. Is, is everyone all right with that? Yes, okay, great. I'm gonna take that as a yes. <laughs> Thank you. And the next few are multi-jurisdictional advisory bodies on which yourselves sit on these boards, commissions, and committees. So I'm just have a basic overview of what they do when they're meeting the first meeting in January and who is currently um, on this board, commission, or committee. Most of them, you're not terming off. We just like to re we, we like to affirm every um, year that you want to continue as the representative. So, for the advisory council of the area agency on aging, it's a lot of A's, um, an advocacy group about for the elderly. This is meeting in January, and Jacques Bertrand is our current representative. Is that all right, or do you want to change it up? Um, yeah, I'll continue. I had a meeting today, as a matter of fact. But I would like to point out, as far as I know, Carolyn is, uh, has um, left the board as an alternate, so we do need an alternate from this, from this group. It would be nice to get someone from the uh, city council as an alternate. Wonderful. But it doesn't have to be. If you're interested in um, senior issues, um, this is a great way to get involved. Okay, so um, now that we know that's an option, are there any council members interested in becoming an alternate for um, for this particular commission at this time? Okay, doesn't seem um, as if there are any. Maybe this is something we can post, Chloe? Absolutely. Okay, cool. I'm making note of Thank that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Bertrand, for letting me know about that. Our next board is similar again if you want to continue you may as the representative however you'll note that our alternate um, has is no longer seated on council so we will need an alternate for ambag who provide leadership for counties and cities in our area and their next meeting is january 13th is anyone interested in being an alternate and council member peterson would you like to continue i would like to continue thank you okay and i'll be the alternate Great, thank you. Thank you for your patience as I'm taking minutes and <laughs> presenting here. Okay, so for the Santa Cruz County Sanitation District, a similar spiel here. The current representation is Council Member Bertrand and Vice Mayor Story, you are the alternate. Uh, I apologize that the next meeting is actually not until January 21st. However, generally they do have the first Thursday meeting, which would have been before council. So you have a little break, but um, I'd still love to know if you want to continue 
on this board or this district board? Yes. Yeah, I'll be glad to continue. Um, today, as a matter of fact, I went on a tour of the facility, so it keeps you busy. Great. Thank you. I'm happy to continue as Jacques Altina. Thank you. Just a few more. And in this case, uh, we do have, you know, Councilmember Botorf no longer on council and his term had expired. So we need, we'll need a new represent, representative for the Santa Cruz Metro Board um, that I believe works with the RTC as well. So this is the transportation agency in our area. I'd be happy to, um, to take that seat if there's no other interested council members. Thank you. Does that have an alternate, Maya? I, you know, I don't think an alternate would be problematic. I didn't see one noted, but it's always a good idea. If you're interested, I can write, I can note that. Well, maybe we can advertise for an alternate, so. Okay. 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 I just don't know. I, I will get back to you. I will check on that. And in this case, this is previously known as, um, I'm totally blanking on the, the previous name, but it's now Central Coast Clean Energy Policy Board because it's expanded outside of Monterey Bay. Uh, this is our community choice electricity provider. And the representative will be technically appointed by the county city selection committee uh, either end of this month or early January. The first official meeting is February 17th. So whomever from city council is interested will be appointed by the city selection committee. Chloe, I'm interested in this, in this position. Okay, wonderful, thank you. And I think that could be the alternate if we need that. Okay. Or if, is it supposed to be from council, the alternate? Yes, I believe that okay. that is fine. And I spoke with their uh, their board clerk, and she did mention they they were looking for an alternate. So thank you. I'll I'll note you down. Okay. Cool. Wonderful. And I believe, huh, that's all. Good job. <laughs> and this is just a preview for what we'll be taking on January fourteenth. There will be a few more city specific bodies and about the same amount multi-jurisdictional bodies, most of which we are just going to confirm that those that are serving are interested in continuing. You'll notice though that the library advisory committee is the council appointing a community member. So though we don't as staff run that advisory body, it's regional, it is a community member, not a member of council that sits on that committee. So if you have any questions from between now and January, feel free to let me know. And we are open, the recruitment is open for these listed uh, advisory bodies. And with that, I'll say thank you for your patience. Chloe, I believe we have a, um, a hand raised. Maybe it's a question. Vice Mayor Story, did you have a question? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I did have a question. Um, my question was um, about the council appointment to the Arts Commission. Yes. Um, I didn't see that on the list. I wasn't sure, you know, on that appointment. I wasn't sure if it's up for renewal or, or affirmation or if there was other council members that may be interested in that. Are you referring to the you serving on the city's Art and Cultural Commission? Yes. Okay, so I didn't see that your term was expiring. However, um, I will double check that. Um, I did see that you were the current representative. Okay. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I wasn't sure that there was a set, you know, term, multiple year term. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just check it out and bring it back to us if necessary. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I do see Councilmember Bertrand's hand uh, raised. Do you have a question, Councilmember Bertrand? Yeah, I do. Um, since I went to a meeting this Wednesday, I thought the Santa Cruz County Flood Control and Water Conservation District was zone five. Oh, you're um, correct. Maybe. Yes. Yeah, because I was there for zone five. Okay. I think that was a typo, so thank you for correcting me. <laughs> yeah, I waited five hours to get my <laughs> time on the agenda, so. <laughs> hmm. Thank you for that, Councilmember Bertrand. Okay, so um, if the city manager can remind me, is this, do we need um, a motion or? I think it just 
Paige, you're good. Yes. Okay. Well, Chloe, do you have everything you need for this evening? Yes, I. that was perfectly done. Thank you. And again, thank you. That was a lot of information. I will turn it back to council and to the mayor. Thank you, Chloe. Okay, we're going to be moving on to item 9C, and I have something that I need to read before we move forward. Is that correct? That's Amy? correct. Okay. So before the city council this evening, as part of agenda item 9C, is a recommendation for salary changes for the following employee groups. Association of Capitola Employees, Confidential, Mid-Management, Police Captain, and At-Will Management Employees. The at-will management employees consist of department heads and the city manager. The employee agreements before the city council would rescind the 6% COVID-related salary reduction and a 2.25% cost of living adjustment effective December 27, 2020 for the listed groups, including department heads and the city manager. And at this time, I'll go ahead and ask for a staff report. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Brooks. Let me try and share my screen. Um, sorry, it takes a little while with this one. Share screen. Okay, I hope you see that okay. Um, so are you seeing the presentation? Just, okay, great, thank you. Um, so I'll, I'll go back a little bit, back into 2020. Um, we were not sure of what the, obviously the budget impacts were gonna be of COVID. Um, so in April, May, we anticipated a pretty significant a projected deficit of $4.5 million. So because of that, the city began negotiations on concessions with the employee groups in June and July of last year. Um, for agreements through December 26th of this year. Um, the miscellaneous groups, ACE, mid-management, confidential, and the police captains, as well as executive management, came to an agreement of a 6% salary reduction with a 40-hour additional leave offset, um, as well as no vacation cash out. Um, the Capitola Police Office Association of the city agreed on a 2% salary reduction and deferral of a contractual um, 2.25 COLA, which was to be implemented last July, but it was deferred until January of this year, next year. Um, they also included a vacation cash out. Because we were coming to the end of those agreements, and as the finance director reported earlier, um, revenues have been better than projected. Um, so we began meeting with um, the groups for um, new agreements, basically to take us through um, the end of this fiscal year, um, the CPOA, the Police Office Association, have an existing contract. It was in, ex in place through June 30th of this year. The other groups had agreements that were actually ending on December 26th of this year. The existing CPOA agreement includes the following, uh, rescinding the 2% salary reduction effective December 27th, um, defer the, the deferral of the July 2020 COLA um, will be in place in January 2021. And there was also an existing 2.25% cost of living adjustment in January of 2021 as well. Um, the vacation cash out um, um, suspension is still in place. The six month agreement with the other groups, ACE and management, confidential police captains, and as the mayor reported, executive management, um, includes rescinding the 6% salary reduction effective December 27, 2020, um, and a 2.25 cost of living adjustment effective December 27, 2020. The vacation cash out suspension is still in place for, for those groups as well. Um, and the city and the employee groups will begin negotiation on successor agreements for beyond the end of this fiscal year, early 2021, um, as we get more information, um, you know, from our revenues as well as expenditures, we'll be talking with the groups at that point for longer term uh, contracts beyond the six months we're talking about here. 
So at this point, the recommended action is to authorize the city manager to execute side letter agreements with the existing, um, with the groups, the Association of Capital Employees, bid management, confidential employees, bargaining unit, as well as the police captain, approve changes to the management compensation plan, which is the department heads, approve the Sixth Amendment to the city manager employee contract, and to adopt a resolution approving the new salary schedule. There was one update and additional materials for one um, position. Um, in addition, no action is needed on the CPOA, the Police Office Association Agreement, because their contract was in place through uh, June 30th of this year. And that is my presentation. I'm here to ask, answer any questions if you have any. Thank you, Larry. Do we have any council questions at this time? Okay, seeing none. Um, do we have any members of the public um, who have comments? I do not see anybody um, in the public asking to comment on this item. Okay, so we can go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to council for discussion and action. I see Council Member Peterson's hand raised. Yeah, I'd like to move approval of the recommended action. Second. Okay, we have a first and a second. Is there any other discussion from council at this time? All right, if we can have a roll call, please. Councilmember Bertrand. I agree. Councilmember Kaiser. I agree. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. Okay, this item passes unanimously. Okay, now we're going to move on to item 9D, Council Compensation. Can I have a report from staff, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor Brooks. Let me uh, share my screen real quick. See if I can do it successfully two times in one. No. Can everyone see that? All right, thank you. So by way of background, um, in September of 2019, you recall council voted to adopt ordinance number uh, 1032, increasing civil city council's monthly salary from $500 to $600 monthly. This item was um, actually presented to the finance advisory committee and this uh, increase is consistent with the recommendation that came from the FAC. <clears throat> This um, would also be the first increase to council compensation since December of 2006. However, due to um, California government code, when uh, council, the increase could not become effective until after the November election of this year. Um, and the same California government code allows any or all council members to waive compensation. Each council member should individually confirm compensation adjustments. In May, City Council unanimously agreed to defer the increase and reduce compensation by 6% to be consistent with the um, concessions that were being made by the employees in the miscellaneous labor groups. And since it was unanimous, there was no change to the ordinance was required at that time. As we just heard the, um, from the last two presentations on December 27th, those employee concessions will be ending and for the miscellaneous group, there will be a 2.25% cost of living adjustment. If council approves increasing the um, staff monthly salary $600 a month, the annual increase is $7,000. That's $6,000 in salary, $1,000 in benefits, and that's the entire council. That's not each council member. I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, so our, our recommendation is to affirm that the city council's monthly compensation should return to the amount specified in the municipal code beginning on December 27, 2020. And just as a reminder, each council member should individually confirm the compensation adjustment. And that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you. Do we have any council questions at this time? Okay, I'm seeing none. Um, do we have any questions or comments from our public? 
about this item? Mayor Brooks, I do not see any um, anyone with their hands up, and I do not see any emails on this item. Okay, I'll go ahead and close public the public hearing, bring this back to council for discussion and action. I see Council Member Peterson can raise. Thank you, Mayor Brooks. I just want to acknowledge that we did receive some public comments on this, uh, on this item via email uh, with concerns about the percentage of the increase. And I want to address those concerns because I feel like generally um, when council members or any elected body increases their own compensation, that there, there may be questions or concerns about that. I feel like it's worth addressing that. Um, as mentioned in the slide, the council hasn't increased their compensation um, in, in the last 13 years. And if council compensation had received a COLA uh, uh, in the way that staff had, then the, the, um, uh, the pay for, for council would have been quite higher uh, by, by this time. Of course, it's not necessarily always appropriate for there to be the same kind of increase every year for council as there is. The staff, as staff, as, as I say, are the experts, and as I've said before, as council members, we're kind of jacks of all trade and masters of none. Um, but that being said, I think it's also important to note, um, as, as was discussed in the FAC, uh, and I also want to point out that in the FAC discussion on this item, um, myself and, at the time, Vice Mayor, now Mayor Brooks, uh, did not vote on this item because uh, we were uh, impacted by it. Um, but but that or, or I guess at the time it was myself and council member or then mayor for Tom, my apologies. Um, not on that on the item, but we did have discussion on it. And in the discussion with the FAC, uh, part of the um, um, decision behind the idea to increase council compensation was um, that one, being a council member is quite costly at times, and it may be a little bit different uh, during COVID times, but typically there are um, lots of requests to come to public events where you have to buy a ticket or to join someone for a lunch or a coffee to discuss uh, city issues, and all of those costs add up. And we certainly wouldn't want someone to um, not run for council because they feel that they couldn't afford uh, to do so. So that was part of the discussion in the FAC um, a, a year or two ago. Um, it certainly feels like decades ago uh, from in 2020, as most things do now. Um, but I just wanted to take a moment to comment on that and bring that up because we did receive question about it um, that I certainly wanted it to be addressed. Thank you, Council Member Peterson. Are there any other council members with any comments at this time? I see Vice Mayor Story's hand up. Thank you, Mayor Burke. And I just wanted to add to what um, uh, Council Member uh, Peterson had just mentioned about the Finance Advisory Committee uh, and that this recommendation uh, came through the Finance Advisory Committee. Um, and they did it through uh, a comparable analysis study of uh, similar uh, communities uh, in Central California. Um, and, you know, in the region that from $500 to $600 a month um, was uh, came out of their analysis and their recommendation solely. Um, and so that's on um, the basis that I had originally uh, had approved it. So I just wanted to add that uh, in uh, for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Story. Are there any other comments at this time? We're still open for a motion. I'll move the recommendation. We have a first. I'll second that. We have a second. Any other um, comments? Seeing none, can I have a roll call? Councilmember Bertrand. I confirm my vote. Councilmember Kaiser. Aye. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye, and I confirm. Thank you. And Mayor Brooks. Aye, and I confirm. 
The motion passes unanimously. We're now going to move on to item 9E, consider approval of the contract changes, change orders number 9 and 10 for the Capitola Branch Library Project. And that report from staff, please. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The item before you tonight is about the library, and I'm going to share my screen. So give me a minute here, please. There we go. I hope you can all see the presentation. Like I said, the item behind, behind you is a report we do periodically on the library project, which is still under construction. Tonight, you will be uh, asked to approve change orders 9 and 10 on the project. Um, current status of the project is finally the best news we've had in quite a while. The conflict, conflicting power lines that had delayed construction on the project for approximately a year at this point have been relocated. On, and the last line was moved on October 24, 2020. Auto Construction, the prime contractor on the job, is now working without delays with a full crew. They are focusing on both finishing the exterior and working on interior work that had been delayed uh, because we didn't have a weatherproof building. The eave overhangs have been framed. I think that's probably the biggest thing you see as you drive by there now. And permanent power has been installed, and which has allowed us to start climatizing the interior, which needs to be done before we do the final finishes. The children's room is currently being climatized, and they have put in some of the finishes there. I have some pictures I'll be showing you in a bit where I'll show you that. <clears throat> Brief history on the contract change orders. Um, to date, eight change orders have been approved. Uh, for the city council policy on this project, we did adopt a special policy for approving change orders for this project because of the size of the project. Um, the net total of the change orders, one through eight, have actually reduced the construction costs from the original contract by $446,135. Um, the council will remember we awarded a contract and then went through a, quite a bit of value engineering to bring the cost into uh, a target that the council had set when we approved the project before we issued a notice to proceed. Um, change orders nine or 10, which are before you tonight, will add approximately $90,000 to the existing contract. Brief on Brief description of uh, change order nine and 10. Change order nine just uh, is non-power line related. We're trying to keep those separate because we are trying to keep track of the costs that the power line uh, conflicts have caused us. Um, so these are not related to that. It was a $39,617 change order. Uh, approximately $19,000 of that was for unforeseen drainage improvements that were necessary. Essentially, there's some old drain lines probably date back to uh, when the project was, or the uh, site was first developed as a large site at that time. Um, even though those drain lines uh, don't connect or we don't know where they connect to, they still are producing water, uh, and that water is building up behind the foundation of the uh, library, so we needed to do some work to take that water and make sure it got into the storm drain system. Um, the Santa Cruz Public Library System has also requested some changes and uh, or upgrades to the security systems in place. They're trying to get each system to be uniform across their many branches. Uh, that's a $20,000 additional cost. Now, change order 10 is completely power line related and is a, a cost of $49,640. Um, with breaking that down, the roof and the, and the beams that are on the roof, we had to change how it got built. In order to get a roof on the part of the building that we had built already, we modified the roof trusses and basically took off the overhangs and had to bolt them back on and the beams, the same thing with the steel beams that are go across the structure. So to deal with that is another $22,495. Um, there's quite a bit of going back and forth with pg e that the contractor had to go through, uh, negotiating and making sure that their project was actually meeting the conditions. We, they did quite a bit of surveying to make sure pg e was aware of how far the lines needed to be moved. Um, so that coordination effort was $18,041. And it also required us how would we change the uh, paving the parking lot. Uh, it intended to be done in one uh, move uh, prior to this winter. Uh, they, they would do it at the end of construction, come in and pave it with one four-inch lift, one four-inch section of pavement. Um, because of 
they're not finished, they're still driving heavy equipment over, but in order to make it uh, better for the winter, they did one two-inch lift, which will require them to come back and do a second lift at $9,000 for that. So those are the two change orders that are being considered tonight. I want to give a quick financial review. It's been a while since they've done this on the project, um, especially with a new council member. Um, these are the funding sources for the project. Uh, these, have, this, these numbers have not changed since this was last presented to you, but just revealing it. Measure S is $10 million that we received from Measure S. I think it was originally $10 million, and we added another $269,600 in interest from Measure S. The successor agency, um, we received $2.741 million from them. The general fund put in a little over $1.5 million. The friends of uh, the library have, have raised $600,000, which has gone directly into the, into the construction project. County library funds have donated, or not donated, but have uh, uh, provided $510,000, and we've had $130,000 in investment earnings. So in total, we have $15,803.99, $997 uh, in revenues. The project budget at this time has remained at $15,150,000, leaving a available funds of $653,000 that have not been allocated to the project that are available. On the expenditure side, the construction costs through construction uh, change order number eight was $11,875,865. Construction nine, change orders nine and 10 are there adding in what we hopefully will approve tonight. We have architectural fees at one and a half million, permits and special inspections at $150,000, project management fees for our project manager who is on site daily and, and really running the project for the city is most little under $300,000. Miscellaneous expenses are tree reports and other things of $18,000. Fixtures, furniture, and equipment, which are all ordered and sitting in, a where in several warehouses right now are $408,000. We keep the PG&E costs. Those costs have been all around the place. Uh, to remove the lines, they ended up costing us $1,450, which is kind of scary that we had to wait a year to get the, that work completed. <laughs> In summary, uh, project budget, we have $15,803,997 available. Um, total expenses of a little $14.3 million. So we have a current balance with contingency of 1.4 million. We do have anticipated change orders still coming, um, a total of $651,000. Of those, the anticipated PG&E delay costs are gonna be about $300,000 at this time we anticipate. So with that, we still hope to have remaining funds of close to $800,000 as this project wraps up. So here I have a series of pictures. We walked the site last week and I just wanted to share a couple with you. As we uh, move forward, here's the entrance. You can see the Ipe wood in place, the Capitol branch sign. Um, over here is the front door um, when that gets built. And over here, this the community room. You can see it's uh, quite a beautiful entrance to the building. This shows the siding that's going on, um, the majority of the building. And here you get a good look at the eaves that are finally constructed all the way around the building. Before they had only been constructed on mainly the side away from Wharf Road and partially along the other two sides. So it's great to see that in good shape. These doors, just for your information, will be the service uh, employee entry doors. So here's uh, going around the other side of the building. This is behind these windows is the children's area. And this area between this oak tree here and the building is where the, a large deck will be. And there'll be places to read out there. The top lot is just outside the picture to the right of the tree. This is the corner sign at the corner of Wharf Road and Clare Street. That's, I think, just recently built. I wanted to share that with you. And you can see the scaffolding and the wires up here. This is the scaffolding that could not be built. Uh, I think we got to about the mid-level before, and now allows us to build scaffolding up to the top of the building and complete construction. Moving to the interior, uh, starting with the children's area. I started with this because it actually has the ceiling in place. Uh, you can see it's a, a slatted ceiling with uh, a black background. These holes here are sewn, uh, sewn tubes that are bringing light in, and these two actually have the diffuser 
<clears throat> and then that actually they we were there on a four o'clock in the afternoon and the, the amount of light provided by these was quite a bit um i will admit say that this is the, the area that the uh, art project for the building will be built the leaves will be hanging to try and bring the outdoors in will be hanging from the ceiling there's going to be a lot going on with ceiling while diffusers will have leaves and we'll have sprinkler heads so but it should be quite beautiful when it's done this is turning around from uh, looking at the children's room into the community room. It's going to have the same ceiling here that is in the children's area. It's going to have a collapsible wall that goes across here so that there can be meetings and presentations going on here, separate from the children's area. Uh, but if there's nothing going on here and the librarians want to, they can open up this wall and make this part of the children's area. This will have a small kitchenette in there with a sink and a refrigerator, I believe, and the rest of this is storage for tables and chairs and this is the main room of the library um, after you walk in the ceiling here will be put in it'll be the same ceiling that you saw in the children's room except instead of being white it will be a natural wood color remember this is supposed to be the bottom of a boat and, and the design so um, this will have a, a continuous running slats going down the ceiling this is the corner and nearest, nearest to wharf and claire's uh, it has a great view overlooking the Brisbane Mansion. This area here is where the librarian's desk will be. And the, over here is a series of meeting and conference rooms that will be available for users to use. So with that, um, the recommended action tonight is to receive this report and approve contract change orders 9 and 10 with auto construction for the Capitol Branch Library Project in the amount of $89,257,000. Yeah, let me try that again. $89,257, excuse me. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Do we have any questions from council? I see Vice Mayor Story's hand is raised. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Steve, uh, for that report and update. Um, it's um, really uh, encouraging to see that we've almost completed and one my my uh, one question I have is uh, when do you project the ribbon cutting will take place? Um, so at this point, we are projecting a mid to late February completion of the project. Uh, we have the furniture being delivered, I think, in mid February. That'll give them enough time to go through the change orders. So at this time, I'd say the end of February is our target date at this point. Yeah, that that sounds great, and. Um, um, one other question about the um, surplus uh, contingency uh, balance. Uh, will that, um, let's say, and assuming that it's 800,000, will that all be credited back to the general fund? Yes, it will. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Sorry. I, oh. I'm sorry. Did you have a comment? I was just going to add something to the response about Councilmember Story's question about the ribbon cutting. The library, um, the library JPA has indicated that they need about 60 days to sort of outfit and furnish the building. So um, the, the contractor will be done in February, but we don't think that the, the building wouldn't be ready to open until um, probably the end of April. Uh, and that's, of course, contingent upon being able to open libraries at that point. But I just want to make that clear so nobody thinks that the doors are going to be open in, in February. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> Thank you for that clarification. Councilmember Bertrand, did you have a question? Yeah, I was going to ask about that too because the vacant building uh, would be just the part of um, the first step, and then we have the uh, building out of it. So um, is there a chance for a tour? I didn't know there was a tour. I'd love to go see it at this stage if that's possible. Yeah, we're, we, we did manage to have a quick tour last week, and I'd be happy to try and set one up. But they're still under COVID restrictions at the libraries or at the construction site, so, um, but I'd be happy to put something together. And have we reached out to the friends of the library group, uh, giving them a tour, or is, is that in the planning? They'd be very interested, I'm sure. Right, we're trying to keep the tour group small, but um, I'd be happy to talk to them. Okay, thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Are there any other questions from council at this time? Okay, seeing none, this is a time um, for questions from our public. 
Larry, do we have any questions? Chair Brooks, I do not see any attendees with their hands raised, and I do not see any emails on this item. Thank you. I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to Council for discussion and action. I think I see no story hand. I just wanted to make a motion to approve staff recommendations concerning change orders 9 and 10. No, I'll second that. Okay, we have a first and a second. Any other comments at this time? Okay, seeing none, can I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Bertrand. I approve. Councilmember Kaiser. I approve. Councilmember Peterson. Aye. Vice Mayor Story. Aye. Mayor Brooks. Aye. All right, well, that brings us to the end of our meeting. We're on item 10 for adjournment. Thank you, Council, staff, and Capitola. Um, as what Council Member Peterson, she had a closing, so I worked really hard on this one. Um, please remember to find the good in others and yourself. Until next time, good night. Great meeting. <laughs> good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Goodbye.